Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Pisces, how have you changed my... <laughs> you're in sweethearts. So maybe you're like sweethearts. I don't know. My sweetheart, Pisces, how have you changed? I'm going to see. I'm going to see who you were then, who you are now. I'm going to see the lesson that you haven't fully learned, but the lesson that you have fully learned. And I'm going to utilize that in a really unique way. I'm going to use the Archangel deck here to kind of get an idea of angel guidance that was around you then and is around you now and what you were working through with those angels. And then the fairy deck coming through as well. I kind of see an association of the challenge between then and now and the lessons. And then I have the teeny tiny, which is tarot on the side, ready to go, Pisces. All right, Pisces, my Piscis friends, saved the best for last. Here we go. Compassion. And then soften your heart with respect to the situation and all the people involved, including yourself. So you were very compassionate back then, or what you are now. You were very compassionate. You softened your heart with respect to the situation. You know. What is with your cards? Remember who you are is now coming out. So that's who you are now. That's a handful, but it was all face down and you had one face up. Remember who you are. You are powerful loving and creative child of God, you are very loved. And you're remembering this, or you're being guided to be helped to remember this. That's what the angel's doing for you right now. So in the past with compassion, you had Archangel Zachiel, and now you have Archangel Michael. It always comes up as a favorite, though. <laughs> wonder if when, you know, all the other archangels are hanging around and they talk about Michael. Do you have anybody who likes Michael? Why does everybody like Michael? You know what I do? I'll tell you. Well, I know what you did, Zachio. You know, they just don't know. Joe Felix. I swear, it's always in the comments. Oh, Archangel Michael. Oh, what is this? Comfort. What are these cards? Comfort and courage. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> Comfort and courage. It's like, take it. Do it. Go with it. Comfort and courage. Shit, you're not. You sneakies. You're so sneaky. You're not supposed to see the lesson until I pulled out more cards. Hello from heaven. All right, y'all. Oh, you have Ariel, both. Ariel. Oh. She's popular, too. I don't know. I wonder if Archangel Michael and Archangel Ariel are like a, a, a couple or something. Damn you. You changed it all up. Very last one you are in this series of readings and here you are you're changing it up on me so the lesson that you haven't fully learned is something to do with comfort here it says i am with you in your time of need helping your heart to heal oh and look at you have hello from heaven so maybe you're going through ah, what is this? just a second there's a button something on my pants hurts i don't know what it is I don't know. Anyways, I'm sorry for that. But it was really bothering me. It's okay now. This is like, um, you could be going through something and maybe you're, for the most part, isolated through it. Or you don't have anyone to talk to about it and you feel kind of alone. Because this is the kind of energy that is like, yo, hey, we're here for you. Um, whether you know it or not, your loved ones in heaven are doing fine. Let go of worries. Don't worry about anything. And feel their loving blessings. And then the lesson that you're still working on perfecting here is um, knowing that they're with you in your time of need. Helping and they're helping your heart to heal. So I don't know if that's all the time or something in particular. Now, what you have learned, the lesson you fully learned, you're bitching ass selves. Courageous. Be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. You've learned that lesson. You know how important that is. When there's no one there for you, there is you. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's why it's hard for you to feel this other energy. Like the, you know, maybe you've been through a lot. I kind of feel like when you've perfected a lesson, you've probably um, like navigated through 
elements that create the lesson a few a more than a few times so to be courageous and stand up for your beliefs uh you know you could have been born as kind of like the black sheep of the family um or there's just like been a lot of different points throughout life where you know nobody could really see it your way or perhaps your um i want to say your own sovereignty in some element was being uh manipulated or taken taken advantage of because standing up for your beliefs here and there could have been things going on that you knew were wrong and nobody else was standing up for it so you're going to stand up for it like right there's a real sense because i think ariel too i think oh no oh no it's asriel why did i think that you have asriel twice I thought it was Ariel twice. Isn't that funny? I could have sworn that changed. It looked like they both start with A. Isn't that funny how hello from heaven and like I'm here for you. You're still learning that. You're still not. Because you're so reliant on yourself, I think. Or you've learned so well to rely on yourself. Hmm. Now, they're working with you to remember who you are. I think I'm, I'm hearing because you're part of a team. I'm hearing you're part of a team. A team of angels. But it feels like you do it all on your own. <laughs> they're like, well, you don't, you know, we're here too. Okay. You've learned to be compassionate, including with yourself. Because it does say that, including yourself. Well, that was the lesson that you were working on anyway. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if you <laughs> shouldn't say that. Because this is just something that you were getting guidance in in the past. Look in a book. Wherever your question, whatever your question right now, you'll find the answer in a book. The words you find will bring the insight you seek. That's interesting. This was in the past. Is there something that you read? Some sort of information that you gained that literally came out of a book to soften your heart with respect to some sort of situation and all the people involved, including yourself. It's interesting. Now... You're remembering who you are, healing. You're a healer and you are healed. Now is the time for you to give or receive healing. Everyone has a natural ability to heal others. Yes, even you. Ah, maybe you've been a warrior. Maybe you've had to be a warrior for quite some time here, but really who you are is a healer. So let's not forget about that. That's the part of you that's coming to light here. That's the part of you that's really being supported in terms of space and time. And now it is. It's to heal. To be a healer. And that's just so interesting because you think of, like, I think of courage and standing up uh, for your beliefs. Like, there's a sense of warrior with that, right? And, um, and then compassion, forgiving yourself. It's like finding wounded soldiers of the other team or the other team, or the other country, or whatever, the other king, the other kingdom, and uh, being compassionate, and knowing that, that that person, like, cut your leg, or, but you've, <laughs> it's like taking them, taking them to, to receive help, I'm not sure in a book, how the book comes in yet, there's something that you've discovered in a book, mm. but now it's healing, could be people that you battled against in the past, people that you had conflict with in the past, people that you had to really stand up against in the past. But now you're the healer. You're taking on a different role. Not fully learned, lost and found. What was once lost is about to be found, thanks to the lost and found fairy. Sometimes she can help us find things we never even realized were lost. And right, and it says, I am with you in your time of need, helping your heart to heal. 
maybe you lost your heart. <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of sad. That sounds like, you know, that's got that, that sort of, <laughs> it feels like kind of the unrequited love feeling there. Maybe you lost your heart. Um, maybe you left your heart in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know. But there's something here about helping your heart to heal and lost and found. The capacity to love. Well, that's interesting. And, and, and two, like going from warrior to healer. Wounded to healed. So you're working on that lesson still. Now, but yay, your courage. You've got more courage than frogs got green. Oh, temptation. Oh, maybe you're, <laughs> wait, to stand up for your beliefs. Are you in denial about an unhealthy habit? Perhaps one that makes you feel guilty. This fairy says you have the power to overcome temptation, whatever its guise. Well, what is this? Is this a temptation that you were courageous enough to avoid? You know how to avoid temptation. You can stand up for your own beliefs. But now okay so i'm gonna put here this might have to do with more kind of like it's not the whole reading but it's just an analogy that i'm kind of getting with these cards that are playing out here whereas um this could have a little bit to do like the lessons with romantic relationships and it could be um you know maybe being tempted into things that wouldn't serve your higher good Right? Like being courageous to stand up for what you believe and I'm worth more than this. I won't be tempted. Maybe there's a sexual temptation. Um, but now what's funny is, and two, there could have been also like maybe protecting your heart. Because with the lost and found and talking about, you know, helping you, you in your time of need and helping your heart to heal. I mean, maybe you were in relationships where you were, people were, oh, she's really attractive. <laughs> she's really attractive. And maybe people just saw you as a sexual conquest. Or maybe um, you saw people as sexual conquests. But underneath everything here, it has to do with the heart. And maybe your heart has been put away in a little, a little drawer for a little while. But now your angels are here to help you with your heart and to bring loving blessings you're not alone remember who you are you are a healer and you are healing the the then is i'm not sure how the book comes in but we'll see how this com continues to unfold light the fairy queen of light comes to shed love and light onto your current situation and to remind you that light can penetrate the darkness And hello from heaven. I like that, right? Oh, that has a feeling like the light penetrating the darkness and the hello from heaven feels like sort of a divine intervention. Mm -hmm. Pat, why are you being so fussy with me now? Come on. Oh, Jesus, deck. All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, what is this? I'm not quite adding up compassion in the book. Okay, I just got some of you might have been reading some Bible verses or you might have been, there might have been something here religious or some sort of spiritual quotes to help you with compassion. Okay. Compassion. Look in a book. There's a lot coming out here. Queen of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, Ten of Cups, Ace of Swords, Eight of Swords, oh, the Ten of Wands. What in God's name? Okay, this is a difficult situation for sure. 
And it says that soften your heart with respect to the situation and all of the people involved, including yourself. I'm still not sure how the book comes into play. Like it might have something to do with scripture or spiritual passages or quotes. But okay, what? Okay, Queen of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Ten of Cups, the Ace of Swords, the Eight of Swords, and the Ten of Wands. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is almost like there's something that you discover here. There's a, something in a relationship that you discover. And I want to say it might be something that starts off as a friendship. Something that starts off as a friendship. And it, well, it, it might, may just still be a friendship. It might stay, it might stay platonic. It becomes more. Like where there's three, there's these two come together and they're just like these two become one in a sense with moving from here like this group to then to then the 10 and they're just together and it's but it's happy like it's this beautiful happiness it's like finding happiness finding happiness in some group or in some group endeavor or with a group of friends and but i feel like there's one person in particular you find this happiness with and it's so clear it could not be clearer to you like but then the Eight of Swords and the Ten of Wands, it just, then it becomes clear. Oh, it's Alanis Morissette. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? That's what it is. Because now it's like, no, you can't go there. You can't do that. You can't touch it. And then you carry this heavy burden ah, of that. Right? What's that Alanis Morissette song? Mm, how does that go? Oh, meeting the man of your dreams and then meeting his lovely wife. <laughs> oh, see, like, it's almost like that. Oh, that's a no touch. Or all you need is a fork and all you have is, like, a spoon. <laughs> it is. That is a difficult situation. And to soften your heart with respect to that and everyone involved. I'm not sure the book comes in. Maybe there's laws looking in a book or... Why is the book here? Whatever your question right now, you'll find the answer in a book. The words you find will bring the... I'm sorry, I have my glasses. <laughs> my reading is a little bit better than this. Okay. Wherever... Oh, <laughs> ah, I don't know where my glasses are. Um, whatever your question right now. So if you're questioning something, maybe you're questioning something about feelings you had for someone or how could I have this great friendship or I could have these wonderful feelings for someone but they can't go anywhere and so now I just get to live with that burden you'll find the answer in a book the words you find will bring the insight you seek okay the first thing is the four of wands so maybe somebody's married you find that in a book I don't know is that a registry can you do that? And the star. The book of man. I'm hearing the book of man. The four of wands with Aquarius. The book of man. I think it would be something religious. The book of man. Life sucks. <laughs> and so shall yours. I don't know. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. I have to say that because mine does too at times, okay? And if you can't yet laugh at it sometimes, you're going to lose your fucking mind and you're going to become a mean, grumpy bitch or asshole. Trust me. So, yeah. Remember who you are. Healing. The healer. The chariot. Oh, oh I thought that... Oh, All no, right. Um, the Three of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, oh, the Ten of Swords. There's something beyond some group or some project that you've worked on in the past. Remember who you are. This is weird. Okay, the Three of Pentacles, right? Like, that's kind of like working in a group, but then you have the Nine. So you're doing this on your own now. You're doing something on your own. But then the Ten of Swords comes in. Oh, okay, now I get it. There's, okay, 
there's something about you where your identity was connected to what you were working on. Or who you were working with. And then when it's just you here with the Nine of Pentacles, there's a huge part of self that kind of disappears. But that's why you have, remember who you are. Because the Ten of Swords is like a death of the ego. Like, wow, I am not that anymore. Who am I? You're a powerful, loving, and creative child of God. That is who you are. Now, healing and healed. Healing and healing. You can hear the birds outside. I have the window open. All right. You've got the Ten of Pentacles, the Death card, and the Strength card. Wow, you've been through it. <sighs> This, this is having, this is being strong enough to get through some sort of major ending here. And you feel it. You, I mean, you feel this in your day to day because it's the, ten, it's the end of a 10 of pentacles. So it could be the end of a career. It could be the end of a home life. It could be the end of you just feeling incredibly stable, some element. Mm. And then like being strong enough to get through it. So this is what's going on now. Well, this is what you got, like this energy here. Being strong enough for rebirth. Persevering. Your past is really interesting. I was going to say that, like... It is almost, I'm just honestly hearing, isn't it ironic? Like that Alanis Morissette song. And then like in a book, the book of man. And yes, life will suck and so shall yours. I know it sounds like hard, but it's like, I mean, if you want to read the Bible and shit, you're going to find that all over. <laughs> you're going to find it in everything. And it's kind of true though. Life is going to suck and so shall yours. And it feels like this is a really sucky energy in the past because this is finding the most amazing thing feeling something like oh my god this is the most amazing feeling i never thought i could feel like this with someone or in some capacity nothing could be clearer for you and then it becomes completely untouchable you can't go there and you must carry this burden for the rest of your life You know, I don't think you're going to get nasty with me in the comments when I say this. Because this is the kind of energy that, like, poets are made of. Artists. This is what feeds. Bless you. Larry sneezing. This is what feeds, um... Yeah. Creating that shit. Mm-hmm. And now here you are healing from. Maybe healing from that. Remember who you are. Focus on that, not who you've been or not what you've experienced. All right, comfort and lost and found. Maybe you're having difficulty finding comfort now too. So comfort and lost and found is um, what the lesson you're, you're still working on. You have the Knight of Wands, the Nine of Swords, the Three of Wands and the Lovers. Bless you, honey. You have a lot of leaves in your ass. Who are you? You got a lot of leaves in the house. I just cleaned yesterday, Larry. I can tell you right now, the lesson not fully learned to me looks like um there there's almost like a debate and some sort of gratification of going after something here. The Knight of Wands with the Nine of Swords and the Three of Wands, right? And then you got the Lovers. Okay. This looks like somebody that it could either be sexual. If it's not sexual, it is some sort of drive for gratification. But this gratification brings you comfort. And then one of the, but you see, that it's interesting because you've got temptation here in the lesson that you've learned. 
I'm going to say it almost feels like there was a way you may have comforted yourself in the past. And that would have been associated with some sort of self-gratification. Um, it could have had to do with sex. You know, with temptation and then the Knight of Wands. They're, these are connected. I can see that. These lesson not fully learned and the lesson fully learned is connected. And you're trying to incorporate the two. Which is definitely, that's good. Because you're us, utilizing one perfection to um, foundation perfection of something else. But it's like this in your head. In your head waiting maybe even. The Nine of Swords and the Three of Wands. This feels like it's really difficult for you to wait for things. And with the lost and found, it's as if the universe is bringing something to you. But you, you're kind of like, I, I like to go out and find. I like to go out and do. I got to look for the keys. They're not just going to appear in front of me, right? You've lost your keys. And in the lovers, it could be companionship. It could be partnership. Oh, I don't know. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at this over here. I don't even know why you would look. I don't know. Or maybe that's just like looking at this because this energy over here, something from the past. Um, I would just look at it and think. If you found something that almost feels like something you've never, ever found or felt before but then it becomes completely unattainable and then you must carry that burden. You're healing yourself. And then lost and found here, are you reach? Are you trying to reclaim a feel? You'll never find, I don't know. <laughs> you'll never find that again. I don't, I don't think you, I don't think you can go looking for it. That's what I mean to say. I don't think you can go looking for that. It does have to come to you, but yet you don't seem like, with the, the Knight of Wands and the Nine of Swords, and then the Three of Wands, the Knight of Wands is charging, going. The Three of Wands is waiting for things to come in. And then the Nine of Swords sitting between that is, it's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> the Knight, right? I don't know what to do. So, yeah, I can see how you're perfecting that lesson. <laughs> Yeah, and it says helping your heart to heal too. So if there's something that you felt for someone like in the past, well, you know what? Your heart needs to heal before you go looking for anything. You can stand up for your beliefs, even in temptation. Oh, that's nice too, right? Uh, let's go to the lesson you've learned. <laughs> that's enough giving you a hard time. So the lesson here that you've learned, this is really like, even when the devil tempts you, but you know you're worth more. So that's interesting as well. Because this, I'm really getting this whole, isn't that ironic, over here. Um, but maybe there is somebody that you met. But that person, that person was married. So it does become a no-go zone. And regardless of how much the devil may tempt you with it, you stand up for your beliefs. So be courageous. The King of Wands. He's the most courageous of them all. Oh, and the Hermit. Oh. That's interesting that that would come out with this King of Wands because he's doing something over there for himself. I don't know what he's doing. Very self-gratified. He's very self-gratified. And you have the Hermit, so. You know, I'm going to say this is you know how this courage comes in is maybe you would buckle under whatever this temptation is if it was too close to you. But by maintaining distance between you and this temptation, whatever that might symbolize, that is courageous in itself. It takes a lot of self, wow, willpower to do that. Be your own leader here with the king of wands and the hermit too. Going your own way, doing things that people, other people may not do or think is, or would be brave enough to do. Temptation. 
The Tower. Oh, the Tower and the Nine of Cups. You all have Alanis Morissette written all over this reading because it is. There's something in your life. You got the Eight of Wands at the bottom. Movement, communication. Um, something definitely that you came across here in life and I don't know what you found in the book. The Book of Man. But <sighs> this is like a dream or a wish. Like some something tempted you, right? But it's the tower. It's like your Nine of Cups is the tower. It is the most untouchable. Don't touch this. <laughs> so you go in another direction. I want to say it feels like you sacrificed your heart, particularly with the lesson that you're still learning here. You sacrificed your heart. The feelings that you had, perhaps for someone, you sacrificed the feelings that you had um, because the compromise of yourself was too great. The karma that you would have built up in this was too strong. So you're, you do have strong self-will here. That is really apparent. Um, but the thing is, it's almost like, well, yeah, but what about my heart, Cindy? What about my heart spirit? Like that part. But it says that the angels are working with you on that, with comfort and lost and found. What a deep reading. Okay, you got the hello from heaven and light. That is like, doesn't, that feels like, um, like a divine intervention. And perhaps you're worthy of one. I mean, you conquered the devil here. And the devil showed up with your nine of cups. This is like your dream. It checks off all your boxes. But you, I guess you passed the test. Like a shitty ass test, doesn't it? Hello from heaven, light. The eight of pentacles, the seven of pentacles, and the seven of cups. All right, you have another test to pass. Your worthy opponents in this lifetime um, I don't think a lot of people will be passing the tests that you're passing, Pisces. Um, okay, this is this is about mastering again because we have the Eight of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is trying to, you know, have the right plan moving forward. The Seven of Cups, there's illusions. There's illusions. There's deception. There's um, choices to be made and navigated. This is coming from heaven, though. So I feel like you may be on your way to some sort of divine choice. But with two sevens, well, I think I've heard that before, that seven represents God or divinity. I don't know. But isn't it ironic? You have the Knight of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles. Well, that is like the plan. The plan here is to put yourself out in the cold. The plan here is to dis, um, isolate yourself. We have the Hermit. The plan here is to go in a different direction. That this This energy is like what Shakespeare is made of. This is the energy of a poet, um, an artist, uh, um, the deepest love song you've ever heard. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna go do the extended Pisces. In the extended, I'm gonna look at the archetype deck. I'm gonna use it to see what archetypal energy you are currently transforming. And then we're gonna see what archetypal energy you are gonna most embody in the future. Oh, Pisces. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.